We're going to do a different kind of video today, guys. I've had a lot of questions over the months since I launched my TikTok and my YouTube where people are asking me to show my kit. Like, what am I actually using? They're interested in my gear. And foot gear came up in a TikTok vid I did about bugging out. Because in the video, I mentioned that you need to have a good pair of boots that you can put some miles on that's well broken in. Okay, and it's going to last you for a period of time. So today, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get into the two pieces of footwear that I would bring with me if I had to bug out. Not that we want to, right? But if I had to, this is what I would be bringing with me. I'm going to talk about the foot gear that I have, like at, you know, just kind of like in general, because I have a whole bunch of stuff. These are just my two top choices. I'm going to explain why. And then we're going to get into barefooting it. I'm going to talk about that for a while because I think it's actually going to play a pretty big part and should hit the fan for a lot of people, whether they want it to or not. All right. A lot of people are going to be stuck going barefoot after they blow out their freaking boots or their shoes. All right. So let's talk about how to adjust, why to do it, and, uh, and the benefits and stuff like that. Okay. So my first boot that I would be bugging out with, and this would be on my foot would be my Danner Vicious Boots with the four and a half inch height on them. Now, I want to say they make them with a, in a six inch, or maybe it's like a five and a half inch for additional ankle support. Uh, and let's talk about that for a minute. Why additional ankle support? Why do you need it? Where does it benefit you? Well, uh, what you're going to get with a boot with a higher, um, higher support here is additional weight, but... If you're walking around in the dark and you step in a hole, you're less likely to twist an ankle or break it. Okay, so we're, that's really going to help you is if you're carrying heavy loads and you step on something wrong, carrying a person, step on something wrong, or you're moving rapidly through really rough terrain and you take a wrong step somewhere, uh, or walking around at night, that kind of thing, okay? So that's where that's really going to help you out. Now, is it worth it? Why did Efficient in the Field go with a four and a half inch boot over the six inch boot? Uh, well, for me personally, guys, I blew my ankles out in the infantry and I can step in a badger hole and twist an ankle really bad in the dark to a point where I eat shit and I can't tell what happened. I get up, I'm fine. My ankles don't swell. I don't break them. So I just feel like I've blown out all my ligaments and tendons and my ankles and so it's not really as much of a concern for me, and I'd rather take advantage of the lighter weight boot. So that's why I like these Danners. Let's talk about the boot itself for a minute here. It's got a nice leather upper on it. These are Gore-Tex, so they don't get sopping wet inside easily. I mean, they can if I'm out in the sun all day and really getting a lot of work uh, done. They'll get a bit wet, but they don't get sopping wet. These have a great sole on them. Good Vibram sole with some chicken shit on it. Uh, and I want to say that the pair of these two boots came in at three pounds and five ounces. Just not that heavy, guys. Really, really lightweight. Anyone that has Danners knows that they last for a really long time. So if I'm not wearing this boot every single day and putting it through just some hard-ass shit in, in SHTF... This boot is going to last me for a number of years after bugging out. All right. So, oh, I should mention as well that I did swap out the insole for a doctor's, a Dr. Scholl's, excuse me, um, cushioned insole. Uh, it makes it much more comfortable to put a lot of miles on in this boot. It doesn't add a whole bunch of weight. And it was about twice as thick as the original insole. So that was a big win for me as far as doing that. I should mention that oftentimes I replace my boot laces with either 550 cord, so I have some extra cordage on hand, or um, Kevlar laces if they're going to you know, see a lot of wear and tear and a lot of hard use. I haven't done that yet with these Danners. That's something I'll be getting around to in the near future. So the second pair of shoes, not boots, that I would be bringing with me if I had to bug out is these Zero shoes. And why? Well, these are extremely lightweight. The two of them together, I want to say, came in at one pound, 7.6 ounces. So less than three quarters of a pound each. So I could strap these to the back of my pack and hump them out 
and no sweat. I have an extra pair of footwear that was very light to get out there. They've got a decent sole on them with some pretty good traction. Um, you could cover a lot of miles in these shoes, and it's not going to wear you out because they just don't really weigh much. It's almost like going barefoot. And that's another thing about these shoes that I should mention is that this has a zero heel. This is basically a barefoot shoe. Uh, so when you're walking around in these, it actually works your feet muscles better. And if you go do 10 miles, you can buy a pair of these and you go do 10 miles in them. I guarantee you the muscles in your feet will be sore for days. Okay. So these actually will strengthen your foot. They allow your toes and the front of your foot to kind of move around a little bit. So they're very comfortable. Uh, and they, and they, you know, give you enough support back here to like lock your heel in. Uh, let's talk about the company though for a minute. I'll tell you guys what I purchased a pair of zero shoes that didn't have all this black rubbery stuff on them uh, years ago they were made of this brown material and I blew them out in about six months I was doing a lot of hiking in the Arizona desert at that point in time and they just didn't last and I didn't feel that they were worth the money and so I didn't purchase another pair and then I saw these in Goodwill about a year ago and they looked like a more robust version of the same um, shoe I had purchased before and they were like 18 bucks so I went ahead and bought them and this pair has held up just fine I'm really happy with it for the $18 price tag but I don't know what this is actually going for there are a lot of barefoot companies out there these days though just the shoes tend to be kind of on the ridiculous side when it comes to the cost so you know it is what it is but wearing a shoe like this you get to take advantage of all the lightweight properties, obviously, but you also get to strengthen your foot and adjust to walking with no heel. And why is that important, guys? Why is it important? Let's talk about it. It's important because if shit hit the fan, there's a good chance you're going to end up barefoot at some point in time. Okay? Literally barefoot. You're going to blow apart your boots or you're only going to bring one pair when you should have brought two and it's just not going to last you that long. Um, you could get robbed for your boots. You could get robbed for that shit. So, you know, I think it's for me personally, I like to go barefoot. I think that there's some real health benefits to grounding yourself and walking with your bare feet on the bare ground. And I will explain to you guys that during my eight years that I spent off grid in really remote places, I, for five of those years, I spent half of the year barefoot if not more. Sometimes I spent nine months of it barefoot and even did most of the winter barefoot if there wasn't snow on the ground. For three of those years, I spent the entire year barefoot. I would put on shoes only if I was going to some kind of family event like a wedding. And I would carry flip-flops with me in a backpack if I was like going to provision and I'd go into a grocery store barefoot. And if someone that worked there complained, I'd throw on flip-flops. But most of the time, nobody said anything. Occasionally, a customer would make a comment like, that's dirty. And I'd just tell them, you want to see dirty, go get your shoes tested for bacteria and fungus and shit. Let's see who's got dirty feet, you know? Because my feet were airing out all day long. Yeah, there's some dirt on the ground and, and stuff like that. So the bottom of your feet get pretty gnarly looking. But, you know, you just wash them before you go to bed. You know what I'm saying? You wash them before you go in the house. Um, or the, in my case, you wash them before you go in the trailer or the truck camper or the freaking camper van, you know? What I learned doing this whole barefoot thing was that your feet will adjust and they will get tough very, very quickly. Guys, I have literally hunted every single day for months at a time barefoot. And we're talking doing six to eight miles out and back sometimes twice a day, okay? And there were times if I did twice a day where the bottoms of my feet would get a little sore from wear, uh, but I'd just take it easy the next day and they'd be, you know, good to go. And a lot of times just sleeping at night in the morning time, your feet would be totally recovered. Uh, so I actually intend to employ that tactic a lot in Shit Hit The Fan if I find myself out and about bugging out. And as a matter of fact, 
out here on the ranch in the good half of the year, I would be doing a lot of barefooting it as well. Just got to be a little more careful around places that have had lots of nails and screws falling out of the back of trucks over the course of decades, you know. So you got to be a little little careful about that. Another benefit to barefooting it is how quiet you can be. And yes, guys, you're going to be more quiet barefoot once you get used to it than you will be wearing boots and shoes, okay? The benefit of boots and shoes really is you can be a little more reckless, you know, if, you're, if your feet aren't broken in. But your feet will get so tough, and I've done this in like the Arizona, New Mexico desert where there's jumping cactus and shit all over the place. I've done it in pine forests. Initially, when you start doing it, pine needles will, they'll stick you. They'll stick through your skin. But after a number of weeks, that'll stop happening. And your feet will get so damn tough, you could step on pine cones. And all you can tell is that you're really stepping on something that's not flat, you know. So you really start to be a lot less concerned about it. Uh, you do need to still be kind of cognizant of like sharp sticks and stuff like that. They'll still poke a hole in your foot if you kick them hard enough or step on one hard enough. Uh, but you become very aware of what's on the ground, and you become very aware of how much noise you're making. And so it's going to give you a big advantage if you find yourself stalking game, which a lot of us are going to find ourselves in that situation and shit hit the fan. So there you go, guys. That's my breakdown on that. Let's talk. Oh, how do you do that? How do you get yourself broken for barefooting? Just so you know, let me drop how to do it right now. And just store this in the back of your head if you're not interested in barefooting it now. Because you probably are going to end up doing it at some point in time. And you'll know how to break yourself in slowly. What you're going to do is you're going to do two hours on the first day of barefooting it. And then the next day you're going to see how sore your feet are. They're probably going to be a little sore on the bottom. And, um, and then you're just going to take the second day off. Okay. And then the third day you're going to go back and you're going to do another two hours. You're going to do this until you can do two hours every single day, and then you're going to increase it to three hours a day, four hours a day. And when you get to the point where you can do four hours a day, guys, usually you can do an entire day, and if your feet are a bit sore the next day, just reduce the time, you know? Put on shoes for half that day, and then do no shoes for the second half of the day, and you will rapidly adjust. Let's go over socks real quick. I'm going to tell you guys personally what I would bug out with when it comes to socks, just so you know what my personal uh, selections would be. And now that you know, I, I'm intending to spend probably more than half of the year barefoot and shit hit the fan. It'll make more sense as to why I'm not bringing an absolute ridiculous number of socks. So my personal choices would be two, possibly three pairs of a heavyweight sock for the winter time, and we're talking a good durable sock. Uh, the brands I like right now are Darn Tough Socks and the Dicky Socks, which are pretty affordable. You can find them all over the place. They seem to last uh, multiple years for me, uh, which most socks don't. I usually am going through like two dozen socks uh, a year in the summertime, but that's usually those lighter weight socks. So yeah, th the two to three pairs of the heavyweight winter sock, and then two to three pairs of a medium weight sock. That's it. No lightweight sock because I'm going to be barefooting it, right? But the, the medium weight sock will be good uh, for those changes between the seasons, like when it's cold and, and uh, you know, not super cold during the daytime. And obviously the heavyweight sock would be getting worn in the winter. All right. And then you got some socks. Uh, you have enough pairs of socks that you can wear a clean pair while you're washing the other ones. That's kind of the goal. And not to put too much wear on one pair at a time. And then we're going to wrap it right there. You guys know that I'm pretty minimalist to my approach to everything. And it probably makes sense as to why I would bring these uh, two pairs of boots, shoes, and the socks that I would select. But comments, dudes, let's make it a conversation down below. Because... I actually have a shit ton of boots, dudes. I've got like five pairs of combat boots in a sea bag down in the barn. I've got a number of slip-ons. I've got sorrels for wet weather, all kinds of stuff. And I just have narrowed it down to these two pairs because not only are they my favorite, uh, but the weight really makes sense. And uh, they both have been great in the durability department as well. Okay. 
What are your choices? Why do you like them? Why did you pick them? Comments down below because just like you guys are probably curious in my kit, I'm curious in your kit. I'd like to know what you guys are rocking as well because, um, hey, let's make it a learning experience. There's always a teachable moment in every video, even for me, even after I do them and checking out y'all's comments down below. So conversation, guys, hit it up. Like it, share it with someone who could benefit from the information. Subscribe to the channel. Dudes, check out my Patreon link in the description. I do these really long info dump videos on there where I answer a lot of patron questions and also just throw in a whole bunch of information that did not make it into my YouTube and TikTok videos. And if you would like to help support the channel, that'd be the perfect place to do it. Uh, I appreciate all the support and all the help with the algorithm guys in the comments and stuff like that. I'll see you all in the next video.